Hello everyone, welcome to the FT Share channel. In this video, we will explore one of the legendary engines from the automotive world, the Citroën 2CV. It is famous for having many advantages and can even be said to have one of the most ideal engines in the world. So what makes this Citroën engine so ideal? Let's begin with the history of the 2CV, a symbol of France. It was created in 1949 by engineer Pierre-Jules Boulanger, after tyre manufacturer Michelin acquired the Citroën Group in 1935. Boulanger's goal was to design a highly innovative small car with simple principles, four seats, a carrying capacity of up to 50 kilograms, and the ability to cross fields while safely carrying egg baskets. A few years later, in 1949, Citroën introduced the 2CV with a 375cc two-cylinder engine. The engine's aluminum alloy cylinders, equipped with fins, aim to improve cooling efficiency. Additionally, there is an axial fan connected directly to the crankshaft. With the same bore and stroke, this car can reach speeds of up to 3,500 revolutions per minute and produce 9 horsepower. The unique appearance of the 2CV remains unchanged. Although it produces only about 15 pound-foot of torque, it is certainly enough to move this 450 kilograms car. Additionally, the Citroën 2CV is powered by front-wheel drive, a three-speed gearbox and can reach a maximum speed of up to 60 km per hour while consuming about 3 litres of fuel per 100 kilometers. In accordance with the creator's vision, Pierre, the 2CV was specifically designed for farmers and low-income social classes. It is small, economical to purchase and maintain. The 2CV, a simple and popular family-friendly car, was designed with ease of maintenance in mind. Its chassis, bodywork, seats and engine can be easily dismantled. Although not perfect in comfort, it remains a favourite in France and around the world. To ensure accuracy, we will compare the Citroën 2CV with its main competitor in the market at the time, the 1950 Volkswagen Beetle. In terms of specifications, the Beetle is equipped with a four-cylinder engine with a capacity of 1,131 cc, a compression ratio of about 5.6 to 1, and can produce approximately 25 horsepower at 3,300 revolutions per minute. Although the compression ratio is slightly lower than that of the Citroën 2 CV, there are other differences between the two cars. For example, the Beetle still uses a classic and simple gear oil pump, while the 2CV has switched to a more modern Gerator pump. If we look at the center of the Citroen engine, we will see two gears. The first has four teeth, and the second is shaped like a container that has five sides, where these gears are applied directly connected to the axle or camshaft and the part is called Gerator Oil Pump, which will be tasked with supplying oil. The primary distinction between the oil pumps in Citroen and Beetle engines is that the Citroen oil pump produces less noise and vibration while also being more efficient. However, the oil pump in Beetle engines is noteworthy due to its simpler design and lower cost. Overall, this type of pump has the same performance as in general, which is easy to repair because it consists of only two parts. Both work by sucking oil from the oil reservoir tube in the engine block, then pushing the oil to flow under pressure through the channel inside the axle nut and also through the gap in the axle crutch. But as we know, not all versions of the oil pump use this method. There are versions that install special channels in the connecting rod to flow oil to the pins, like in the video we discussed on Conrad's VCR engine. Additionally, the oil must be kept at a cool temperature. To achieve this, there is an aluminum cooling system located behind the fan. 
Its purpose is to maintain a stable oil temperature and prevent blockages in other engine parts caused by overheated oil. One of the shortcomings of the VW Beetle engine is the serious problem in the third cylinder caused by the less than ideal placement of the spark plug gap. This can result in overheating or knocking. Additionally, the cold air produced by the centrifugal fan in the Beetle will be directed solely into the cylinder. This change in air direction can increase resistance and decrease engine efficiency. The axial fan used in the Citroen engine is arguably simpler as it simply pushes the air straight towards the engine without the use of a belt or chain as used in most car engines. But not only there, there is still more that is not less interesting, namely the placement of the exhaust valve, which they place it at the front of the engine which of course with this placement will allow the air generated from the fan earlier, will focus on the part of the engine that requires the most cooling, and the rest of the air will be flowed into the intake to keep the engine temperature even. Then on the exhaust pipe, Pierre designed it in such a way as to pass through the carburetor area, which is actually intended that the hot air was used to heat the carburetor, which by heating the air entering the engine will increase the density and power of the engine. Moving on to the cylinder head, here we can see that in the rocker arm section, there is a bolt that connects the rocker arm to the valve. And yes, as you might expect, by using the bolt in this section, we can adjust the opening distance between the valve and the engine more precisely. Of course, with the right adjustment, it will allow the incoming air and fuel to flow more smoothly into the cylinder. Meanwhile, in the part of the combustion chamber that is shaped like a hemisphere, it will also help increase its efficiency. In addition to this hemispherical combustion chamber, inside we will see a unique piston shaped for maximum valve opening and a lateral shoulder to prevent compression loss. On the Beetle, the cylinder head had straight valves, which made it more economical and easier to produce. Although this design slightly reduced airflow, it also made the combustion chamber more resistant to knocking and more cost-effective than the Citroën 2CV. Well, besides what we have just mentioned, there are other interesting parts, namely the connecting rod in this Citroën 2CV engine, which consists of only one whole part. So how is it assembled? One aspect that makes it even more interesting is the crankshaft, which consists of a number of parts that are assembled in such a way as to match the connecting rod. Of course, this assembly makes it easier to make the crank pins, as they can be inserted into a small lathe, without the need for large axle cranks like those used in today's engines. Maybe for some people here will ask, how do you turn on the engine? Okay, maybe for some people will think the process of turning on the distributor in general good. But very different from what we imagine, it turns out that the ignition system does not rely on the distributor at all. Instead, the spark plug is controlled by a rotor with a centrifugal forward motion, which is located at the front of the axle noken. This means that every time the piston reaches top dead center, the coil will fire sparks at both spark plugs. But of course, with the sparks that occur at each piston to dead center, the spark plugs will experience twice the wear. But of course, this choice was made to reduce costs and avoid the use of a more complicated ignition system. On the other hand, the Beetle engine is equipped with a reliable four-cylinder motor that can always be started. In fact, the key used to replace a flat tire can also be used to start the engine, even if the battery is depleted. Then, at the top of the engine, we will see the carburetor and an oil fill port equipped with a ventilation filter, or what is often called the breath of the engine block. And after we find out how it works, when the piston returns to the engine block or to the bottom dead center, the space inside will automatically decrease and the pressure it produces must be released, 
If the pressure is left, the engine seals and gaskets will certainly break and later cause oil leaks. In the first development, the engine capacity was increased from 375 cc to 425 cc with power that could reach 18 horsepower. And for the latest development, it was increased again to 602 cc with power that could reach 28 horsepower. And from this development, now this car can reach speeds of more than about 70 miles per hour. As we mentioned at the beginning of the video about the vision of the creator, Pierre-Jules Boulanger. The 2CV car was specifically designed for driving in French villages where most of the roads are unpaved. And to cope with the bumpy roads, the mechanical suspension uses friction dampers, making it very simple and with minimal loss of hydraulic fluid. Besides that, the wipers also work in a unique way, which will be continuous with the speedometer cable, so the faster we go, the faster the wipers will work. And besides that, the system also works automatically, so the wipers will stop moving when the car also stops. On the other hand, Citroën also turns out to have several different versions, including Mahari, Sahara and 2CV van. However, in 1967 in Argentina, the 2CV was renamed to 3CV, which was suggested by the marketing team. The reason, they wanted to emphasize that this model had evolved to be more modern than before. But even so, throughout the world, this car remains familiar with the name Citroën 2CV. The production of the Citroën 2CV started in 1949 and ended in 1991. This vehicle lasted for about 40 years, with about 5 million units sold. After we surveyed, it turned out that the sales figures were far below the sales figures of the Beetle and also the Ford Model T well, but after seeing and knowing all the advantages earlier, it is still enough to make it one of the vehicles worth comparing and also has an important record in automotive history. Okay, that's all the information we can share you in this video. As always, if you have any criticism or suggestions, please use the comments section below and thanks for watching. Thank you.